Hello guys and welcome to another video. My name's Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and a property investor. And in today's video, we're talking about the end of service accommodation. Is there problems on the horizon that are gonna make it a completely unviable strategy? Now, stick with me in this video because I think it contains some really, really important information. And before we do that, if you haven't already given it a like, give it a big like, helps me out with the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't. And one more point on this video. Nick, you've just had a baby, haven't you? Yeah. And we've said that anything we earn in this video or any of the videos this month from people booking consultation calls with me is gonna to go to Nick. So Nick, you've got a message to everybody, haven't you? Join the consultation calls. <laughs> <laughs> that was a delayed message. Yeah, if you wanna to speak to me directly though, link in the description, book a call with me. We can have a one-to-one. -one. Any revenue is going to Nick so that he can buy some more stuff for his baby and wife. Anyway, let's get into the video. Let's talk about service accommodation. And let's talk about these issues that are coming up. So Nick, can you put the pictures of the um, articles that I sent you up on the screen? And as you can see, there's quite a few articles here saying about how Edinburgh have just passed a rule where people can no longer do change of use without asking the council from planning permission. Now, it hasn't come into force yet, but it will do. And essentially what that means is if you want to take your property and turn it into a service accommodation unit, i.e. on Airbnb or booking.com and use it for a short-term rental, then you must go and get planning permission to do this. Now, before we go into the history of everything, what's my opinion of that? Well, actually, I think that's a good thing. I do think that you should have to ask somebody before you change the use of your building. I shouldn't and can't buy a property in the middle of a residential street and turn it into a workshop. It's right that I shouldn't. I can't turn it into an industrial unit and I can't turn it into a hotel. So for me, in my mind, there's no reason that I should be able to have a godforsaken right to be able to turn my building into whatever I want. It's not how UK planning was ever intended, but technology, as quite often is the case, has facilitated this big leap forward in the way that people are traveling, and now the licensing and everything else has to catch up. So for me, I actually think it's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't currently run many service accommodations. I've got one in France, as a holiday home, and it really is a holiday home, you know? And for me, that is where Airbnb and things really come in. I don't think, personally, that if I've got a block of residential flats, that people should be able to rent out one of those flats every Friday, every Saturday, turn it into a party house. It completely destroys the residential nature of that building. It's not unsurprising, and it's absolutely perfectly fine in my mind. Now, I appreciate people running service accommodations might be going, no, it's my property, I can do whatever I want with it. But you wouldn't want your next door neighbor to turn their property into a motorcycle garage. You wouldn't want them to turn it into a car park. The capitalism has to be controlled at some point. And for me, this is one of those occasions where capitalism does need to be controlled. So what is the history and what's happening around the world? Because there's a lot of this going on. And I wanna give you that because really we can look to other cities, other countries and work out what they're doing about Airbnb and then we can apply that to our own country and assume that it's likely that the Western world will all start treating it about the same. Now in Barcelona in May 2018, all Airbnbs or short-term rentals must be licensed. And that led to 2,577 listings being removed for not having a license. And beyond that, Airbnb landlords received over 600,000 euros of fines. So Barcelona were getting very, very serious and it really did cite the fact there was becoming a lack of affordable housing for locals. And I don't think that's unreasonable to then cap the number of Airbnbs or anything else or require them to have licenses. I think that's perfectly acceptable. In London, the 90 day rule has been in place for a long time. And that essentially means that if you have a property so you can rent it out on a short-term basis, but only for 90 days of the year. And what does that mean? It really means it becomes unprofitable to do it unless it is your home. You can't really run an Airbnb for only 90 days of the year if you're paying the mortgage and still make a profit, or not a big one anyway. Berlin, 2014, a complete ban on service accommodation units, and that was overturned in 2018 with a 90-day rule being put in place as long as you have a permit. If it's your primary residence, you do bypass the 90-day rule. However, it must be your primary residence. So in 2018, overturned, you now need a permit and it's a 90-day rule. 
In Amsterdam, it used to be 60 days, it's now only 30 days. Again, you can get planning permission and you can do all the other things that you would normally have to do if you wanted to ha operate a hotel. But if it's your personal residence, if it's a second home or anything like that, 30 days without planning permission. So what does this sort of mean for the UK and the service accommodation industry in my mind? Is it dead? I don't think so. I don't think it's dead at all. I think what's going to happen is you're going to have to look at specific properties and they're going to have to be in the right locations in order to have guest houses. If you drive down a seaside street in Torquay, you'll see guest house after guest house after guest house. That's because there's a specific demand, it's an area that's akin and useful for that, and planning permission has been granted in order to allow for that. The council have been on board and an independent person has made the decision of whether that's an appropriate place for that to be put in place. And I think that independent people really should be the people that are making decisions on this. So let's loop this back to the UK. So London, we've already got the 90-day rule in place. That's already being affected. Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, that's bringing in a ban. You're going to have to get planning permission if you want to turn your property into an Airbnb. What's going to happen to the rest of the UK? Probably something very, very similar. In my mind, it's probably going to be the case that you're going to need to get planning permission unless it's your primary residence. I think the 90-day rule is a very sensible rule, to be honest. I think that means that if you are just going to rent it out short term and it is your primary residence, fair enough, maybe you bypass this rule. However, if it's your second home or an investment property, you really need to be getting planning permission to change the use of that building and I think that's perfectly fine. If you're an out and out capitalist you don't want any government intervention whatsoever, no rules whatsoever. I think capitalism sometimes has to be curtailed and sometimes has to be controlled because it has to work for everybody doesn't it? It can't just work for the few. So for me I am a capitalist, I'm a strong capitalist but at the same time I think that sometimes government policy does need to be put in place to protect people who might be living in an area. And this is one of those instances where for me, it makes perfect sense. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've massively enjoyed putting it together for you. If you want to book a call, link in the description, please do so. And I will see you again on the next video. Cheers guys.